bring in guys excellent afternoon to all our viewers out there have you taken stock of this year's uh will i say inflow and outflow let me put it like that what's the balance she's saying for your organization have you oh what will i say again have you asserted uh your achievements is that the right word to use uh in the last for the last 365 days i know that we still have like uh maybe 10 days remaining or so but have you met up with the plans you set out for yourself in January this year? We will answer all these questions together with our guest today. Anyway, again, I say excellent afternoon for those who are just tuning in. Uh, I remain your convener, Kikelo Mato. And of course, I have Lola One, Lola One, Lola <laughs> Africa. What do you call yourself on social media? I don't know. I, what I, call, myself. I, I call myself Official Lola One. Official Lola One. You heard it right from the mom. <laughs> Yeah, it is a pink day. Welcome, welcome yeah, to yeah. all our beautiful viewers. Thank you every day for joining us for an entire year. We're super excited to be here, as usual, to give your afternoon, you know, the right information and entertainment that you need to have. Welcome, welcome to the show. All right. I think it's important for us to take some real talk from Nigeria, uh, what Nigeria has to tell us today. I know that something eventful happened in Nigeria history today in the military. Um, let's hear one of the pick, uh, let's say one of the pick up lessons or from on this day in history segment. Stay with us, we'll be right back. This day in history, December 21st, 1997, General Dia and some senior military officers are arrested for an alleged coup plot. Ladipo Dia, a retired lieutenant general in the Nigerian army, was military governor of Ogun State. As chief of the general staff, Dia was the de facto vice president during the Sanya Bacho military junta from 1994 until he was arrested in 1997 for treason. Lieutenant General Ladipo Dia, alongside Major General Tunji Olarimoju, Major General Abdul Karim Adisa and eight others were arrested for allegedly plotting to violently overthrow the government of General Sani Abacha. All right, many thanks for staying with us. Uh, uh, Lolo, let me come to you for what's yeah. your take? What's the lessons that you pick from on this day in this year? Because I just feel that there are <laughs> loads of lessons to pick yeah. from it, especially when it comes to overthrowing the uh, previous government uh, at the time, at the General time. Sonia Abacha. Abacha. What's your take on this? You know, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to, you know, coal and all those other things, um, it always leaves like a lacuna out mm -hmm. um, in, a, it, it leaves a vacuum that you'll be wondering that before there is like a planning for a coup, that means there's some kind of dissatisfaction happening. And if um, the coup itself does not work, the aftermath is always bloody. So I always wonder, why do military people actually, you know, plan coups? <laughs> because there's nobody that I've seen that plan coups that if it's not successful, it's going to be like a total annihilation. But in this particular one, even though some people were arrested, everything was kind of sorted out. But I think that Nigeria should continue to learn. Because every time there is an opening that we have a military takeover, it's always forceful, and the will of the people will be taken away, and a dictator will be forced upon the people. And um, it's always, you know, yin yang when it comes to the administration of military administrations in Nigeria. And everybody will keep clamoring to come back to dictate, uh, to come back to democracy. And now that we have democracy, we need to really, really make sure that we're sitting down on our toes very well before another military decides to win over the government. Organizations are taking stock of their business with their yearly turnover, individuals or personal skills are also figuring out their own losses and gains for the year. You know, on my social media this morning, when I posted losses, and one of my uh, commentators or fans said, no, ma, don't use the word losses. We should be yeah. hopeful. I said, okay. We all know when yeah, I but The balance sheet, yeah, everybody exactly. should know that there are two sides to the book. Exactly. This is not uh, new as far as I'm concerned when it comes to the custom around the global, um, well, I say global individual businesses organization when it's time for you to come to the end of the year and come and do a bit of review on mm. your losses your gains and how you can do better but this same tradition uh, also explains the rationale you know why uh, people make plans and projection into the new year with uh well, I say resolutions and all sorts <laughs> you know but mind you we have um how like put it we have been Talking about the business of Nigerians since the beginning of this year on different grounds on economic, economic, Politics. on security, on political, on finances, 
and culturally on this platform and of course on radio as well but now it's time for us to talk about our own organization ourselves when it comes to growth and we have the right person to come and do a lot of talking on that but on the show today we will be looking at the uh what i would like putting out the topic for the for the show today is end of the year april appraisal and new year projection so guys are you ready are you ready to take on this ride with me guys all right we have the right person to help us when it comes to the reflection of this topic and of course its achievement in our career serves as an inspiration to me you know that's the reason why i felt that she is the right person to come and talk about this but you know what before i keep going on and on and on and on and on guys let's take a quick look at the profile stay with me we'll be right back Excellent afternoon again, and it's a pleasure to have you on set. For those who are just tuning in, this is Mrs. Inkiru Olumide Ojo. As I said earlier, she's one of the few women, gosh, that I admire. She has <laughs> this skin right now, sitting in front of her. I wish you could see this skin. How are you hey. doing, Ma? Good, and compliment good, of the good, season. Good. I wish you the same. Yeah. Lovely to be here, and thank well done you. on all the amazing work that you do. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Guys. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm starstruck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's just go straight to the point because I know that we've had a lot of things going on behind um, the scene. But I, I would like us to start from um, a simple place. And what mm -hmm. do I mean by a simple place? Many people just think that life is about living and living and the likes and all of that. So um, in as much as um, I, I would say that people live to survive, Mm -hmm. if for lack of a better word right now or people want to live all because of what they desire and the lives and all that why is it important for us to take stock of our time and our lives uh, which is measured in years especially with what is going on around us presently everybody wants to you know achieve this buy this worldly things basically yeah. <laughs> um look i think that the end of the year often provides you you know an opportunity to take stock okay. and you asked why we take stock we take stock to understand how far we've come okay. we take stock to understand if we are able to achieve the objectives that we set we take stock to see am i really going in the right direction mm. you know must i do something differently we take talk stock to say the strategy you know that i've developed up till here would it take me to the next level that I'm going to? So those are the few reasons why, you know, people take stock so that they can know how to show up for next year. Mm. So they can understand what energy levels, what strategy. That's predominantly, you know, why people take stock. Wow. Like, um, 
I, I like the angle you took it from, like taking stock. Mm -hmm. And I want to see it from another angle. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody leaves the year with a lot of um, expectations. You have projections, you mm -hmm. have aspirations, mm -hmm. you are inspired by some things. But do you think that the end of year actually puts pressure on people mm -hmm. and depression starts to set in? Mm -hmm. Because this simple thing you just said mm -hmm. about taking stock mm -hmm. can actually put pressure oh, yes. on people. Yes. So how do we handle that? Because mm -hmm. I've seen mm -hmm. this beautiful thing you just said, which is very needful. Mm -hmm. I've seen it send people down mm -hmm. the rabbit mm -hmm. hole. Mm -hmm. How do you positively take stock and right. not you know, judge yourself so much that mm -hmm. you can't pull yourself out? Mm. Look, I think that one of the things that 2020 taught us and preceding 2020, that was a COVID year, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, 2020, 2020. Was that life can happen as it happened to all of us. Mm. And what it says is you can have an excellent strategy, excellent plan, and then life would happen. So one of the ways not to put pressure on yourself is to understand that there are economic headwinds. I mean, none of us are directly, you know, responsible for all the economic headwinds that we've seen today. So when you are taking stock, you mustn't take stock in isolation of the environment. The environment, mm. you know, the economic environment, social environment must be part, you know, of, of the stock taking, the realistic stock taking. I think that one of the things that I've seen, um, and that's why it looks like people um, are under immense, more immense pressure, is the advent of social media being mm. part of your stock taking. Mm. Understand that stock taking is not new. Mm. Preceding our parents, even when people are farmers or whatever they were, you know, way back in those days, as my children say, they'll <laughs> usually say, how many seeds did I invest in this? You know, what was the output? So that's stock taking. Mm. I feel like there's a lot more pressure from social. Mm. So whilst I'm sharing my accolades, you're sharing your accolades, and then it's no longer, I came on a wholesome journey, I had good outputs, mm. it's now, maybe her own apple is bigger than, let's, let's check the apple. Mm. So I feel like the pressure is external. Yeah. And that's because we allow it. Wow. For me, uh, my, my concern would be uh, in taking stock, you would also have to factor in projection. Mm -hmm. um, the, the whole essence of taking stock is to ensure that uh, some mistakes, some T's across mm -hmm. eyes are dotted. Mm -hmm. um, so what are the black spots you'd advise you to this day who, who have now come <coughs> to the realization or have been uh, a tutored? to imbibe the culture of Plan B mm. by way of jetting out of this country and seeing it as the only option out of the quagmire they seem to find themselves mm. in. But, so in taking stocks, what are the black spots that you think they should avoid in order not to get to the same end results that, mm. look, we can make it here? Mm. That's interesting. I think that one of the first thing is to understand that your objective is not my objective. Mm. Three of us wear glasses here. Not sure if you are long or short-sighted. If I gave you my glasses and you gave me yours, it doesn't matter how desperate we are, we're not going to see. Why do I illustrate with that? To say to us that all of our objectives are personal. Your objective is personal to you. My objective is personal to me. Yours is personal. And I see that one of the things you know, that is happening is when it's the end of the year, you kind of forget what was Kike's output? I, don't, I wasn't previous to what her objective is, but I become a bit flustered. And that's because I'm taking my eyes off my objective. So to understand that, one, your objective is personal to you. Understand that your objective is for you, not unless you are joyfully mm -hmm. setting mm -hmm. an objective, you Together. know, a joint objective with someone. And then you talked about, um, you know, the jackpine theory. And, you know, it's great that people seek alternatives. I feel like... It's all part of living and all part of balance. But the truth is, we're 180 million. Not all of us can, can live elsewhere. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, we've got to be practical, you know, to understand, you know, if this whole um, living business is good for everyone. I see it often on social. If you make the error of saying don't go, people come at you, <laughs> you know, and then. But you should also talk to people who live abroad. Life is great, but I think that hmm. life can also be great in Nigeria. Mm. Mm. Many mm. thanks for that. And I think that with all you've shared thus far, I would like to use um, Real Talk with Kika as an organizational, uh, will I say, um, conversation right now. For example, you know, we are two years um, since inception mm -hmm. and um, almost a year on TV, for, to be precise, February 2nd. Right. Um, but when it comes to the balance sheet, you know, 
I must be frank here. I'm in debt. What do I mean by that? Because, you know, it seems as if I'm always using my other company mm. to kind of push this, um, uh, this other arm forward. So, you know, though people see the showbiz and mm -hmm. the glamour, uh, but mm. I know that uh, we, are we are making progress. Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of feedback and the likes and all of that. But other than that, you know, when it comes to financial terms, you know, in what other ways can organization, you know, measure profit and growth with mm. the kind of illustration I just gave you now? Mm. That's a serious question. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 I, and I suppose media generally is expensive, yes. you mm. know. I, I think, again, it's back to setting the objectives. I remember, you know, years ago in an objective setting session in one of the corporates I had worked in, at, in the past. And, you know, in my unit, you know, they were saying, so, so, so what's the objective? What's this? So I said, Let's not be shy in saying that, you know, for the first two years, we will be building a brand. And therefore, what we're checking mm. will be top of the mind awareness, which I mm. think is in order for a business as yours. Mm. And one of the things I'm finding is the long-term mindset of when a business turns over is not what people have. Mm. People kind of think yeah. when you start a business <laughs> is what you find. <laughs> yeah, right. In aviation, sometimes you start a route, you don't break even for five years. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Some people do seven, some people do three. So you've mm. got to understand the type of business you are in. Mm. You've got to understand how long it'll take you and understand, you know, don't be extra hard on yourself. Understand that this may be just my awareness building period. Mm. So that when I then walk in to say, um, sponsor this top with key care at X amount. He will because I've spent two years building top of the mind awareness. Mm. Mm. All right. Well, well, well. Sure, just to add to her, and, and, uh, she was saying how, how long term, you know, plan. You know, I'm in the education sector as well, mm. and as a school proprietor, when we started off, uh, some people came to us and said, "Look, oh, no time. You'd make it in <laughs> over a year." Yeah. <laughs> and in a year, or like, we haven't even started. And then some people came and said, it takes like three years mm -hmm. for a school mm -hmm. to start so making. In three years, we're still in Kikas position, indebted, and then uh, struggling to pay salaries. But yes, paying salaries. Mm -hmm. And we've, we're five years gone, and we're just about stabilizing. So wow. Kikia, I'd say thumbs up as you've started off. And... You know, be in it for the long haul. It's yeah. not just... Uh, and I'm not owing salaries, guys. Let me put it out there. I'm <laughs> yeah. not owing salaries. And I must use this opportunity to say thank you to all our sponsors. Well, what I said earlier is basically is about not getting profit from it. Yeah, do I have a um, supportive system when it comes to great uh, organizations supporting this brand? Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. But sometimes, you know, when you're an independent producer, partner with an, mm -hmm. a media outfit, do you understand? It's, it's, it's a whole lot. Mm -hmm. It's a whole lot. Yes. And that's yeah. where yeah. ZS comes just, in. Yeah. And, right. you know, yeah. just try to fill in. in. I want to ask, ma'am, because, um, you know, I love to have... Um, serious conversations mm -hmm. and this particular conversation <laughs> you're having with us today is something that everybody should bite into and chew and even have a recording of it to be able to listen back right. later. Mm -hmm. I understand the concept of goal setting. Mm -hmm. Like this year, I set just very basic goals. Mm -hmm. I, I would I either have mm -hmm. a show mm -hmm. or I must have one major thing that I have done in the year. Right. Because of the COVID year, I couldn't have like a major comedy show. Right. So I opted to do a film, mm -hmm. which I have done. A lot of people would say, oh, your projections are little, mm -hmm. but it gave me stability. Mm -hmm. So how do you, my, how do you make your goals achievable mm -hmm. in bits and pieces? Mm -hmm. People don't seem to understand that there is a goal in a goal in a goal. Mm -hmm. How do you help us mm -hmm. break it into pieces so that mm -hmm. people will not feel like, oh, I, if you're looking at the big picture, mm -hmm. I haven't done, a lot of people say, Lola will do a show, she'll do this, she'll do that. But I have achieved what I set Correct. to do. How mm -hmm. do we manage our short-term goals, long-term, mm -hmm. medium-term goal, mm -hmm. goals, and long-term? Mm -hmm. Look, I think, I mean, we've agreed a few principles, which is that your goal is your own, your personal mm. objective. I think there always is the smart, you know, make it achievable, you know, measurable, all of those things for you. I think that timeline is important. Mm. Um, part of why, you know, people get frustrated is the type of timelines that they set for themselves. Let's say you're setting up a new business, you're even setting up a fintech. And then you decide that, you know, in the Nigerian parlance, in two and a half years, you would blow. You forget to think about, you know, the regulatory environment. You mm. can have all of your plans. And the regulator says, 
but it's not in order. But it's not, then mm. you become pressured because what should have been a long-term goal, you inadvertently made it a short-term goal because mm. you didn't give full consideration. So planning is important. Planning in terms of time, planning in terms of things you can control and the things you cannot control. Typically in the ones that you can control, you can give shorter timelines and the ones that you cannot control, you give them wider timelines. And you know this year, I remember when Rihanna came up on one of the richest persons list. And I just thought of, you know, how many times people had sat down and I said, where's Rihanna now? Where's the music? What's mm. going on? But my girl was busy building her lingerie business and all of the other things she yeah. was doing on the side. And I think that, you know, the testament to all of that is also having a strength of character. Or maybe mm. I can call it emotional resilience, where, mm. you know, you're not moved by every wind or everything, you know, that comes at you. So there's a lot of work that should be done with self, you know, and with self is also what types of investments are you making to help you achieve those goals? You see people who set really great goals, but are not making the types of investment in themselves to be able to have the right skills to be able to deliver those goals. Mm -hmm. If you ask us around the table, did we all train, except the educator, of course, did we all make the right investment, you know, in ourselves to be able to deliver our goals? before we start shouting at the end of the year that we didn't deliver it. Mm -hmm. So there are lots of, you know, pieces and, and, and things that we can get right at the stage of planning. Yeah. All right, many thanks for that submission. I think for me, I want us to analyze the half, half year 2020 performance of the country's biggest, um, uh, well, I say companies, um, when it comes to showbiz, I think, I think, they, I think from what I read, maybe they, they eat, um, they are profits at about, 346.4 billion, which is about 111 billion uh, uh, more than 2020 based on some of their mm. profits that they've made according to Business Day. So I must ask you, with your own um, experience as the head of, I don't know if I'm supposed to mention this. No, don't. All right. <laughs> All right, but with your own experience, you know, uh, what important strategies, you know, have, have been Will you advise people when it comes to how they should be deliberate when it comes to their companies to survive the coming year, knowing that a lot of people have actually um, uh, lost um, so much during COVID um, uh, period? So, so I think that maybe a good place to start would be to review 2020 and just think about all of the skills that we learned. Mm. Because okay. to my mind, those are the skills, you know, that help them achieve what the numbers that they have achieved today. I think that in 2022, in running organizations, leadership styles changed. People, you know, led differently. You had to lead with a lot more empathy, mm. a lot more understanding. Mm. You couldn't be Emot a helicopter. Cool, you couldn't be a helicopter manager. Have you done this thing? What time? Six <laughs> o'clock. I we were supposed to bring it. You let people in their homes, you know, to do that. So I feel like these companies must have changed leadership styles. Mm as a quick example of the sorts of things that they may have done. Mm. I think they may also have changed strategies. Mm. I remember during COVID finding people who were producers of designer wear going into, what do we rub mm. our hands with? No. Sanitizers. Sanitizers. Face fact, I actually saw when I was sitting by a, 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 somebody that was advertising, those same people had gone into something else. Mm. So there was a lot of um, evolving but there was also a lot of agility, mm. as we can see, you know, with all of the vaccines that have been produced. So things that you would take 16 years to do before, corporates have learned to be a bit more agile in the way that they deliver. So I'd say it would probably, because I don't work there, I don't know, be a combination of a changing leadership style, a combination of, of having an agile process or revising their processes, you know, to make it more agile. Mm. And I think an outcome of that will also be a combination of their people. Mm. Um, so they probably reviewed their systems and their processes and their people. And all of these three things would perhaps have helped them have a better output. All right. Mm. I think it's important for us to quickly open our phone lines. Don't forget that you can be part of this conversation by calling our studio number 9 We're showing on your screen right now. Remember, we are live on YouTube page on Silverbird platform on Facebook and on YouTube, and of course on Real Talk, we get YouTube page and um, uh, Facebook as well. So, if we're setting goals, I love goal setting, and um, maybe I learned er earlier on in my life, I don't set goals at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. Whatever I need to do, I start in November. Right. So that by the time, I don't see mm. the new year as a special time. Mm. I just see it something. 
so that whatever there's this pressure of new year resolution <laughs> that we need to help people change the mind you know nigerians are mindset kind of people and we're stereotyped everybody believes that the beginning of the year is the best time to set girls to do things because oh, it's 2022 there's something flying in the air that's going to make everything different how do you begin to you know harness your strength on time to be able to mm. do this talk taking on time and make mm. quick projections because all these academic things you're telling us mm -hmm. i know it takes a process mm -hmm. to be able to you know, count the cost of what the year cost you, what are the mistakes, what mm -hmm. do you need to do better? Mm -hmm. So when is the best time to start setting goals, especially mm -hmm. with a new year imminent? Mm. That's a very curious question. Look, I know that the new year puts pressure on us all. And when you were saying Nigerians, I don't think it's peculiar to us. I've mm. seen the data, you know, living in um, South Africa that said that the use of the gym is at its highest in the first quarter <laughs> of the year. Because we're all probably yeah. saying, we would lose weight, put on, or whatever it is your personal objective is. And by the second quarter, you're thinking, well, I'm sorry, I don't see soon. <laughs> and then you're on to, yeah, you know, something things. else. I obviously don't think that is peculiar to us. Um, look, I think depending on when you decide, you know, your year end is. Some corporates have March as, a start, at the, end of, as the end of their year. Yeah. They don't necessarily have the start of the year. Yeah. So that should be the same for individuals. You start in November. I'm not sure when you start. People start at different times. Mm. So I think even though the year starts in January, you decide when the start of the year is for you mm. because it is your decision. One of the things I've preached quite often, and this is to you know, everyone in my circle, whether it's a lighthouse or anywhere else, I say to people, be careful because sometimes at the, 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 the start of the year, of the pressure, as you say, of the start of the year makes you change strategy, and that's not what you need. Sometimes you need, what you need to change is the effort or the style around how you deliver the strategy. You probably have a great strategy, you know, that is right, but maybe the methodology for delivering on that strategy is what you need to look at. But if you wake up every January 1st to keep changing strategy, I don't know. I suppose it depends on what type of yeah. business that you are running. Maybe that works for you. But don't be in a hurry if I can leave any advice to start changing strategy. Think first about all of the efforts that you've put in, in in delivering this strategy. Maybe, just maybe, and I don't know your business, but maybe that's where the challenge may be. Maybe that's what you need to rework. Mm. Speaking of the whether or not uh, there's a need to change strategy, uh, I'd like you to touch on maintenance culture. Mm. That is something that is highly, highly lacking. Ownership culture. In, in, in mm. Not just ownership. Mm. In, in talking about maintenance culture, let us mm. delve into governance for a bit here. We see successive government come and they abandon projects of their predecessors and mm. uh, uh, they move on with their own very fantastic looking projects and everybody buy into it. Uh, only for it to, you know, lay halfway and then another successive government comes without maintaining that. And then we as individuals, the governed ourselves, uh, we, we, we do not have that ownership, like she used the word ownership. Mm -hmm. We do not take ownership of these infrastructure that mm -hmm. are put in place for us. The maintenance culture that with, with, with which we approach the usage, very poor. I'd like you to touch on that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'll talk about maintenance culture without going, um, you know, into the government and all of those details. I think that maintenance will happen if there's a frequent review. And that is, I mean, one of the things I talked about last week is if feedback is often, you don't have to wait for the end of the year appraisal to say, mm. he came minus six, you didn't do well. Because you are providing feedback, you know, very regularly. Often. And I feel like that is part of the maintenance culture that you're mm. talking about. And how are we setting it? Are we doing it once a quarter? Mm. Are we waiting for a half year review? Are we doing it at the end? And I think that one of the things people need to realize, you know, whether you're corporate or run a business, is the accountability piece that you talk about. So when I come into a review, um, I'm being reviewed, but you also are being reviewed. So you're saying to me, you didn't deliver on, but did you provide me the tools and the equipment, you know, to be able to deliver on this task or this thing or this road or whatever it is. So I feel like there's a dual, you know, process. And, and you rightfully say that there's an owner, owner mentality. There's also a type of mentality that the user should have. 
So I feel like it is both ways and we don't have to wait for the end of the year. Part of a maintenance culture is frequent review. Whether you're doing it monthly, whether you're doing it quarterly, quarterly but just review frequently. So you don't have, imagine waiting for the whole year. You know, mm. it's 365 days. Then at the end of it, you are now appraising. There will be many broken pieces now. So you should have done all of that review so that you can maintain and fix what isn't so working. Regular review. Very That's regular review. So mm. obviously with what, we, what you've shared now, you know, looking into the future, there's a whole lot of um, expectation and uncertainty mm -hmm. around the place or around the globe. Let me put it like that. Right. You know, even in Nigeria, Teloini down to Nigeria, mm -hmm. you know, Many are not certain because of the 2023 elections. You know, we keep it real on this platform. Yeah, that's the reason why people tune in. So I know that how should we make plans and projections uh, for the new year, especially with a whole lot of people, would I say, relocating? You know, and for someone like you who have lived abroad, how can you compare both worlds? You know, just like you said earlier that... Um, it's not easy. It's not the 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 the, the, uh, the grass, the grass is not is always <laughs> greener. On the other side, but mm -hmm. with what is happening right now, and of course with um, election 2023, there are a lot of uncertainties and growth expectation and the likes and all of that. What what's your advice for those who are listening to us right now? Look, I think that you should. Uh, and first of all, Kike, we need to get some data for all of this people leaving we'll soon check the data and <laughs> of 180 million people 80 million people it will be zero point zero 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 so maybe we need a bit of data because i think that data will be more powerful than okay, a few yeah. anecdotal in my view so that's on one hand look i think that with planning and and maybe it's easier instead of looking for a a strategic to talk about my experience i i plan like um i don't have economic headwinds then okay. I plan like I have economic headwinds. Mm. So every time you find there are two plans that are planned like this year will be great. These are the things that, you know, these are, then I'll say have the, this year will be great, but understand that this is where inflation, inflation rate is. Mm. This is what you need to do. So I typically have those two plans. I'm not sure how, you know, maybe you can tell us a bit of how your school will do that. But those are, if I had to use my personal experience, I would plan what I call a fearless, you know, kind of like a fearless, aggressive plan. And then mm. I'll have the conscious plan, which is I'm planning because I've been giving an advance warning that inflation is at this rate, yes. this is at this rate, this is what I should do. True. So those are the two scenarios, you know, that I would deal with. Mm. Excellent. Uh, you know, I, 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 I'm wondering that, okay, for our young people in Nigeria, a lot of them, we have all sorts of youth, they fall into different categories. There's some that are very educated, mm -hmm. some mildly educated, some are educating themselves. You know, there's street education because I believe that their education... Also no education. No education, all sorts of education. How do we begin to, like, you know, address the mind of the young person to help them achieve realistic goals? Hmm. Goals that can actually be measurable, tangible, you, I, when you talk to, I've talked to a couple of young people, you tell them, what's your, what are your aspirations on mm. radio then? They would say, I want to blow. Mm, and I'm it. like, <laughs> how, what do you mean by blow? Something like music. There's a science and a non-science to it. You can determine who's going to like your music. Right. So how do we begin to help them have measurable goals? At yeah. least some, because Nigeria right now, we need to reorientate the minds of mm. our young people. Mm. Aside those that are doing Yahoo, I tell them that even those kinds of things, it takes a lot of intelligence to scam. They should better not do it. Exactly. So if they could put that into something like fintech, mm. develop a lot, a lot of beautiful startups, how can we reorientate their minds and help them do better? So I'm, I'm going to lean in on my education partner to help me. But one of the things my husband has been saying to me through COVID is that education will change. Education is changing. And then he forwarded me something Elon Musk had said about how he pulled his children out of traditional schools yeah. Yeah. and, you know, sent them from this little, started teaching them and then from this little first. homeschool, thank you, and then got a teacher to open, you know, a school. And what do they do in that school? They teach them how to think. And in the end, really, that isn't that what education to help us do? In help Nigeria. us think. <laughs> and so, so I feel like if we understand that we also potentially don't have the capacity for everyone to go to that formal education, and therefore what will make a difference? 
I know someone who set up a gamer business. The person who runs a gamer business for her has never been in a uni, as an example. So the point I'm making is there are opportunities if we can help them see these opportunities. How would we help them see these opportunities? Access to the internet. I think mm -hmm. that when people have access to the internet, that's access, you know how we used to call it before, mm -hmm. worldwide web. web. <laughs> that's access to the entire world. And again, maybe access is not sufficient. It's kind of to say, um, this is also what you should be, you'd be, so that we're not all just, um, this is what you should open your mind oh to. Goodness. I feel like guidance is principally what the youth need. I think me me mentorship plays a, a lot of role yeah. in, in this okay. aspect of um, how the youth should turn out or yeah. would turn out in molding them. Mentorship is key. Because, like she said, not everybody would have access to that uh, formal, formal education. education. But you see people mentoring, people who can actually have access or uh, choice to choose between formal education and, you know, informal, informal education. One. They will stick with one very bad decision because they are mo uh, modeling or mentoring after somebody who is just yeah. uh, a negative uh, uh, personality Influence. in the society. Mm. So mentorship has to do has a lot to do with it. True, mm. very key. All right, guys. You know, <clears throat> let me say this: we are a conscious growth expert, <laughs> and the reason why I'm using that word deliberately is because I know that. Your page has impacted me a lot, especially when it comes to our Monday meetings. I just have to go on a page and have people on a tool you know, get mm. and share it for that oh, day really? to you know, uh, push us ahead for the week. So I right. want you to tell us about it and how can we apply it to ourselves going forward, especially in 2023. Right. Thanks, Hike. Great to hear that kind comment. Um, look, I, I mean, 2022. Gosh, 2022. thank you, guys. We're already in 2023. <laughs> Look, I think that for me, and, and when I say I only started growing recently, it doesn't mean that I wasn't growing physically by size or whatever. Okay, yeah. But I chose the path that I chose because it's occurred to me that you grow even faster when you're conscious, mm. you know, of the growth. And what does being conscious of the growth is? It means that, first of all, you need to have a very high level of self-awareness. Realization. Correct. Thank you. Mm. And it's understanding what you don't have and understanding what you need. Mm. And that's why, you know, whilst I'm an advocate of effusive praise, I think that it's also important that um, the recipient understands where she is. You know, sometimes I'll tell my friends, I'll say, this is okay. They'll say, okay, but you're great. I say, yeah, but I never won a competition. It doesn't mean I'm not great. <laughs> I'm just saying, understand where you are. Mm. And, and therefore, if my ambition is to win that competition in that sector, whatever area we're talking about, then it means that I've got to grow consciously. Mm. And I must do the things that I need to, you know, do to be able to grow consciously. So um, conscious growth is one about having a really high level of self-awareness. And then understanding where you're going and understanding where the gaps are so that you are able to fill the gaps. Mm. I think that one of the unintended outcomes of effusive praise is you now forget that you need development. Mm. And, you know, they say, you are amazing. You are just, you are just the best. And then exactly. you really, really think that you are the best in yeah. OAP in the <laughs> world. world. Even if you're the best in Lagos, there's also Nigeria yeah. to be best in. Even if you're best in Nigeria, there's also West Africa exactly. to be best in. So if you'd like to grow consciously, you need to have a very high um, sense of self-awareness. And I'm not sure who has this quote, but that's what, you know, um, also is a bit sterile for me. And it says, I'm neither foiled by praise nor criticism because neither define me. Mm. Mm. All yeah. right, many thanks for that. I think we've come to um, I the almost end. Said words of marble. You know, we've come to the end of another segment uh, of this uh, of this show, and I uh, must say many thanks for creating time to be here. It's an honor to have someone like your personality on the show. But we are moving into the last segment of the show, which we call trending stories. These stories that bind us together as families, you know. And uh, <coughs> one of the first trending stories that caught our attention is that of the detailed, detained. Um, female soldier, that's Sophia, uh, uh, who, I who, who will be punished for having romantic affair with a uh, youth copper. I don't know if uh, 
uh, technical directors can show a little bit of, uh, of that. I'm yeah, very sure you guys saw it. To... Exactly. She got proposed <clears throat> and all of that. But Lola, let me let you take a swipe. What's your take on this when you saw it? You know, when it comes to military and the, and the, and the nuances of the that, interior the... workings, maybe they need to let us know a little bit of what is acceptable and not acceptable. The fact that you're military uniform, does that mean you can have a social life? You can have a military... You can have other things about your life. This is a proposal. It, she's probably not dating an underage person. Is it the fact that she's in uniform? What are the real issues here? Because the next thing we're going to hear about this thing is court martial. And that means it's precluded away from us. It's a military setting. And she will be punished for what I don't really know is wrong. What is wrong? Did she get proposed to by an underage person or she's not supposed to be proposed to in uniform or did she... We need to know what the real issues are. Well, for me, and for me, we never know it. Lolo, you know, the military, like you said, the nuances and the... I don't know. So many things, so many laws within the military itself that is not um, open. open to uh, civilian knowledge. Um, you, you, for instance, are you aware that you, in military uniform, you're not allowed to hug maybe a civilian. Wow. You know, that's one of their internal rules. Hey, but how do so, civilians and if know you watch, If you watch that video, you'll see after the proposal, you see a lot of hugs going on there. So yeah. I don't know if that's what they're going to be holding her down for. for. However, we see in other climes where parents, military parents who have been on the war front return home and they visit their children in schools, surprise them. And, you know, throw up surprise yes, parties and, like, and all of that. And it's all fun. fun. But I don't know why ours is so regimented Dead. and so rigid. You know, um, I just pray that the government, turning sour the government now. does something about this and the girl doesn't uh, suffer. Yes. What, what's your take on this? I, I actually um, have, I'm not sure that I'm poised to give a view. I mm. think it's important to understand what the rules of where she works is. Yes. Everyone should be, I suppose, oh, yeah. understand what their rules are for the corporates that you're working in. Perhaps behave mm. Kike would have a lot to say. Let's All right. Uh, many, many thanks for Take that. It I, 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 I think this is, this is two, sides, uh, two sided con for me. And firstly, I understand that every profession has um, their own codes and ethics, just like you emphasized earlier, which I feel that they must abide to because that is what their profession has called them to. However, I know she may have violated some of their rules, just as I think this, um, I think killed back, yeah, Abiola, killed Abiola, yeah. it too did for, uh, did during the time, you know, I just feel that the detention by the Navy uh, for some weeks was unnecessary. And the bottom of the matter is that, the bottom line of the matter is that um, rules and regulations are not to be played with, um, just like you also emphasized earlier. And I feel that, um, more importantly, for example, I think it's important for me to butcher, to butcher this with an example, because I know in, in the legal profession, you dare not advertise, just like the architectures as well. Architectures firms who don't advertise, you know. And, uh, it, and it also, you can also do some marketing and the likes and all of that. So I just feel that, just like a doctor too, can never be found at a point of emergency, or will I say life-saving situation for you to be discharging your duties and you're there advertising about yourself. So it, 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 is, it, is on, it, it is uncalled for, if you ask me, it is unnecessary, but it is also in the military code of conduct that soldiers in their uniform should not engage in public display of affection or affair. And I think that they who are also, uh, who are in that line of this should understand that well, I also, another angle to this is that, you know, I know that sometimes we go overboard with some of our rules in the part of this world. And we see American soldiers, for instance, they come back home after being away for a while when it comes to war and services to, to their citizens and all of that. Mm -hmm. And you see that in their uniforms, their kids, you know, their family embrace them dearly, you know, for being away for a very long time. And I know that um, some even go as far as showing their sign of, uh, will I say, weakness by crying, crying. and seeing them. Do you understand? Yeah. So I just felt that sometimes we go overboard. But finally, you know, in my own opinion, she can be pardoned and excused. And she did not even, she did not initiate the... It might, she it's a not, proposal. The guy the proposal, probably did not you know. know. And that, that was my take, that she, she was not even aware that she would be proposed to. But she's human as well. And I believe strongly that 
we need to love and uh, we live to love and be loved, you know, and that's what makes the world go around. Mm. Sometimes we keep saying that, oh, don't act like this, but we've come to a place where we need to start amending. Uh, rewriting some of our rules and regulation mm. in most organizations so that <laughs> exactly so that you know um, the likes of uh, Sophia's brother mm. or yeah. Sophia's uh, family people can tomorrow you know also decide to say they also want to be in that they want to take that line of course so please for those who are listening to Forgive us right her. now pardon her, please, pardon, her pardon her I pardon like her all right ready, ready to yeah. <laughs> we live to love and love, love to, to live, live. Yeah. You know, who are you talking to no, no we no, no. should we'll amend our, our rules <laughs> sometimes <laughs> all right guys i'm in love now story two. <laughs> wow. okay. all right the second trend this story that caught our attention is that of Ghana would denied, or uh, will I say denied or denies uh, Nigerians, maltreating Nigerians because of COVID test results. I'm very sure, I think I shared all those videos in our WhatsApp group at the time and all of that. But Masha, let me come to you first. What's your take thus far with all you've seen on social media platforms? Well, you know what, you see, so many things you see on social media, you don't know the one to believe. I saw the video, but the, the video to me, if you ask me, is inconclusive. I don't know. Uh, nothing was really said about how, why those guys were treated the way they were treated, mm -hmm. except for the write-ups that were accompany the videos. So as for the video, seeing Nigerians <coughs> being treated that way, for whatever reason, I feel it was wrong. Mm -hmm. Those guys looked like you know responsible citizens mm -hmm. of Nigeria who were on transit, according to the story. And if the story is anything to go by, then it's bad. Now, uh, Ghanaian government coming out to deny that, look, we didn't have this kind of treated, treatment meted out on anybody, they have their rights to make their own statement. Uh, on a general note, I think it's wrong for anybody to be treated that way. However, as per social media, you don't believe everything you see. see. All right, my Mrs. Ikiru, what's your take on this? I, I think that um, my head has been buried in the sand, and I've spent <laughs> a lot of um, after work hours sleeping. So I think I'm going to lean on the conversations of the others that are listening to. All right, first, first, uh, for, first off, I feel that, um, uh, how would I put this now? They can't, they can't deny some of the videos that we have seen, and, and as far as I'm concerned, videos don't lie. Why were those guys being malhandled? You know, that's that's no, my question. I'm, I'm getting there. Regardless of however we might want to analyze this, I feel that for someone to be there taking the videos, mm -hmm. is another thing, it's, it's not my word against yours or my against what this is reference this is evidence and it is very poor and very appalling that Ghanaians can treat with their neighboring uh, uh, uh neighboring people like that and it is the fact that you know as far as i'm concerned it's not dignifying it's it, 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 it's I, I don't know we expect a lot from a white man to treat us with respect but when we, when we cannot simply treat ourselves, we black people with so much respect. I know, and it, it, it's for me, let me tell you down to COVID because it is because of COVID that we are also talking about this. I feel that COVID has exposed many of the politics that happens all over the world. And this cut across every sector, including education, health. Earlier, you were talking about education, saying that education is changing, mm -hmm. that that's the reason why Elon Musk is trying to, you know, have to pull his children out of the country. And, and who... Can you fault such actions? Because as far as I'm concerned, when you look at how COVID has exposed every sector, you will see how political things are becoming or have become. And, you know, it, it's unfortunate that there are many other stories of people who are also at this point of departure. Or, or sometimes you, how would I put it, that sometimes you want to travel. Not sometimes, mm. you want to travel, you realize that you go to the hospitals, you pay a lot of money, about 51,000 naira or so, mm. to run a test. And after that, they will tell you that you are negative. You get to the airport, you get to the other country you are traveling to, they will tell you, you are, um, no, they will tell you are positive and they will tell you that you are negative. You are asking yourself, what is going on here? So I just feel that there's a lot of politics going on right now and they are starting people. And that is exactly how I feel that there are a lot of things that need to stop. If not, why will people still continue in that route? Why will uh, people, I think I saw the video from Ethiopia, I saw the uh, videos from um, Togo as well. Oh, that's and the one I was talking of. Not the one they were detaining the, in the hotel. Yeah. That one was self explanatory you know, yes, You know, when Lume you look at it, the about. cost of isolation, change of tickets, are <laughs> even more sometimes costlier 
than even the COVID test itself. You know, so I'm asking myself, when do we need to stop? There is no time for us to get to a place where international airports at the time will not start asking you for thousands of something dollars. <coughs> Already, the 200, if you calculate the whole, the total money, is <coughs> over 200,000. That is somebody's um, uh, pocket money. Money. <laughs> You know, that's, that's what somebody will take to go to travel. So why is it that we are starting ourselves? I just feel that we've, we should come to a place where we need to review where this money is going to. That is where accountability comes in. We need to come to a place where we need to start asking our government. I'm very sure they are listening to us. I don't want to receive any phone call after this show. Because I just feel that, you know, come on, man. A part of my world. You know, it, it's, it's unfortunate that government should, as far as I'm concerned, government should look into this and stop extorting the people. It is unfair. It just needs to be reviewed. They have milked us enough. Yes, I use that word, they've milked us enough. Because where has all this huge amount of money gone into? Have we even started building hospitals from all this money that we've been collecting? The UK now have decided to give us uh, free test kits. What are we even using the free test kits for? And yet, they'll be billing us $51,000. I'm just tired of this country. Sometimes, I truly wonder why I'm Nigerian. I don't know why I'm still here, guys. Because of the real talk we kick out. It is tough. Anyway, it is it's tough. been a we while. To it's, been, yeah. it's been a good one. Really you you want to drop for six No, seconds? I went to Maldives this year, and we were detained at the airport. I had to sleep there for a day because of this COVID thing. Right. You and if you, if you don't pay that money, you cannot go. And everything was just not well communicated. We should do better. Next will be just better. for the sake of humanity. Next year will be better. All Thank right. you for coming for the you. show. Thank it's been a wonderful uh, time with you on the show. Thank you. Hopefully, so much. we'll call you again and you'll. Uh, yes, oblige you'll us. Oblige. As long as you don't take me out of my, my depth, <laughs> I'm right. sure I'll be good. <laughs> All right, we've come to the end of another edition of Did I miss telling you that you're beautiful today? Of course, Did I, I miss know. That? Did I miss that? Um, <laughs> Indeed, it was an awesome show on the show today. And of course, with our resourceful guest, Mrs. Inkiru Olumide Ojo. Many thanks for being on the True show pleasure. today. I'm so, True so pleasure. honored to have you on the show. I thought we did a lot of chatting after the show. All right. My name is Miss Nikola Mato. Now, are you all? Lolo, what about today? Marshall Anthony, I want to say thank you to Moses for not screwing up the end credits. On, on us. Oh, all right. right. <laughs> yeah. All right, bye now, guys. Cheers.